Good afternoon everyone. This is Indrajit Mukherjee, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Nisarani College, Purulia. First of all, I would like to convey my sincere gratitude to the organizer for giving me a space in their online lecture series amid the COVID-19 at Super Cyclone Armstrong for their undergraduate students. I was asked to speak on Tony Morrison's Magnum Opus Beloved. I have kept the title of my talk very simple. It is entitled Reconstructing History Through Discredited Magic in Tony Morrison's Beloved. I have used the word discredited quite intentionally because Morrison didn't consider herself as a magical realist. In an interview with Christina Davis, she said, there was this other knowledge or perception, always discredited, but nevertheless there, which informed the sensibilities and clarified the activities of the blacks, a kind of cosmology that was perceptive as well as enchanting. Now come to the literary genre of the present text. George Lemming's narrator in his In the Castle of My Skin says, one single word makes a tremendous difference. Or Browning's Paracelsus declares, what so wild as words are. Magical realism is one of those wild words that is closely associated with two words. One, magic realism. Another, magical, uh, marvelous or fantastic realism. The term magic realism was coined by French Rowe in his book After Expressionisms, published in 1925, to describe a group of painters of Munich of 1920s who depicted the fantastic and the imaginary subject in an utterly objective manner, using clear-cut definitions and precisely drawn imagery, as we find in Otto Dix's painting The Trench, Alexander Kentor's painting Telegraph Swash or Max Arnest's painting Forest and Earth. The second term, Marvelous or Fantastic Realism, was inaugurated by Carpenter in the preface to his novel, The Kingdom of This World, published in 1949. Because reality, according to Carpenter, was marvelous in this sense that it was conceived by an irrational vision and consisted of a day-to-day -day life of Latin America, expressed mainly through its art, literature, mestizo race and culture. The third term, magic realism, was used for the first time by Angel Flores in one of his lectures in 1955 to describe a mode of narration which constantly blurs the traditional realist distinction between the antinomy of magic and realism and that it creates its aesthetic impact by fusing terms that in principle oppose to each other as we find in Who's This Midnight Children, Juan Rulfo's Pedro Paramo, Tony Morrison's Songs of Solomon, Wilson Harris's Palace of the Peacock, Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude. As the present text is a post-colonial text written in a post-modern style, it is necessary to locate the relationship between post-colonialism, post-modernism and magical realism. According to me, magical realism can be seen as a modus vivendi where post-colonialism and post-modernism intersect each other. The post-colonial critic Benda Kupan knows magic realism at its best opposes fundamentalism and reality. It is at odds with racism, ethnicity, the quest for taproots, origin and homogeneity. Meaning that magical realism is able to express three post-colonial elements. Number one, applying the post-colonial terminology, the magic or the virtual refers to the dominant uh, counter discourse and resistance of the colonized colonized and realism refers to the dominant hegemonic discourse of the colonizer number two 
it is able to produce a text which reveals the gaps and tensions of representation in such a context. Number three, it tries to fill in the gaps of cultural representation in a post-colonial context by recuperating the lost fragments of voices from the point of view of the marginalized or the oppressed or the colonized. In this short of novel, the novelist wages war on totality to borrow the phrase of Lyotard by disrupting, dismantling and deconstructing fixed notions of truth, history and reality through using several postmodern styles such as historiographic metafiction that is an eraser of the grand narratives of nation and history, intertextuality that is the inter-involvement of literary works to one another, self-referentiality, unreliable narrator and a carnivalist subversion of the standard notion of time and space. Probably that is why Homike Bhava takes the view that magical realism after the Latin American boom has become the literary language of the emergent post-colonial world because it expresses a world fissured, distorted and made incredible by cultural displacement in order to express cultures which have been repeatedly unsettled by invasion, occupation and political corruption. The boom refers to the international success of certain Latin American writers such as Mario Vargas Llosa, Juan Rulfo, Garcia Marquez et al. Now come to our text. While going through Middleton Harris's anthropological work, The Black Book, Tony Morrison came across the trials and tragedies of Margaret Gardner who ex escaped slavery by crossing the river to Ohio and killed her child. This real life event inspires Beloved, published in 1987, a slave narrative which reconstructs history through the acts and consciousness of the African American slaves rather than from the perspectives of the white culture. And it, like Du Bois, the souls of black folk, negotiates the legacy of slavery as a personal trauma as well as a national trauma through the ritual of healing. Here, for example, Baby Smart sees mother-in-law like the nurse in Rules These Midnight Children, published in 1981, invokes the imaginative and spiritual power to teach and heal other fellow blacks and slaves in the clearing, in a place called clearing, a place that signifies the necessity for the psychological purifying from the past, a space to confront with traumatic memories safely and rest from them. This defocalized narrative opens with a note of grotesque gothic gloom. One twenty followers spiteful, full of a baby's venom. Meaning that beloved in the skin of an abicue child has arrived in order to haunt her mother. Thereby illustrating the notion of Freud, the repressed always returns or dangerous words in Spectres of Marx, a ghost never dies, it remains always to come and to come back. In Iruba mythology, an abicue child like Ogbanze in Igmo mythology refers to the same children, the same child who dies and returns again and again to plague his or her parents as we find in Benokris the Femistrote or Soinka's poem and abicue or J.P. Clark's poem. Through the characterization of or through the appearance of beloved, Morrison wants to speak the unspeakables. So beloved can be seen as a way of expressing the 
traumatic memories that have been repressed. The house at Bluestone Road seems to suggest a place of cure and sustenance, a space of affirmation and belongingness, according to C, and can be contrasted with sweet home, where C had a rub cabin and walked in a kitchen that was not hard. Attempt does attaining attempting to attain some sort of belongingness. The sweet home can be looked upon as a psychological and phenomenological space. A structure, a microcosmic representation of the structure of the oppressive national apparatus. According to me, it works on two levels. On the one hand, the very structure of power is an intensified manifestation of the banality meted to slaves by the oppressive regimes in the form of the draining of seeds milk by the nephews of the school teacher or seeds scar in the body or Paldi's physical and sexual abuse as part of chain gang in Georgia or Denver's life as a solitary child. On the other hand, the injustice is critiqued through sharing of experiences. Here we find the slaves share their experiences with each other within the space of the sweet home. Within this space, the slaves often express paint of resentment through jokes and parody against their white master, against the school teacher who holds a diary to note the animal and human characteristics of slaves. Thus, we are reminded of Foucault's notion of panoptical. Foucault says that Panoptican creates docile bodies within the space of the prison in his seminal work, Discipline and Punish. Through Beloved, we come to realize that Beloved is a symbol of many Beloveds, generations of mothers and daughters hunted down and stolen from colony. She is the embodiment of the white fox jungle, the psychological effects of slavery. The represent she is the representation not of a single child, but 60 million blacks who are butchered and battered on the threshold of their underneath. The scars in the body of seed remind me of the exploitative and cancerous body of Joshodha in Mahashadadevi's Tonno Daini, which replicates the Brahmanical discourse of gender and class. This novel also illustrates that slavery, the experience of slavery of men and women were different. As Harriet Jacobs in his Incidents of a Girl Slave notes that slavery for men was a terrible thing, but slavery for women was a far more terrible thing. In the end, we find that Sid's ritual, where women of her community help in casting out the voracious and pregnant beloved, she experiences a different kind of trauma. The pregnant beloved is significant here because pregnancy can be seen as a merger of self and other, as said by Julia Kristeva. In an interview, 
Morsinos asked how a ghost is pregnant or how is Gilavet pregnant. She replied, all ghosts are real. In this context, Gilavet can be compared with the metamorphosis of Suthia Genovia in Ruzdi's Shem. The metamorphosis of an innocent girl to a beast or the false pregnancy of Harpo in Allies Walker, the color purple. In the end, we find that Sith uses her murderous hand in trying to kill the white man who again tries to snatch her best thing from her. Another interpretation is that probably she is suffering from MPD, multiple psychological disorder. The novel ends with these words, this is not a story to pass on, meaning that this is this story that cannot be told yet must be told. It is important to tell the story at this moment because it unites us against the dominant hegemonic discourse of the society, of the totalitarian regime, particularly at a time when we are going through a crisis. We are striving towards our monolithic identity and destroying our pluralistic views. The beloved also reminds me of the ghost of the widow ghost of the jewelry box Gohonar Baksho by Oponna Sen, which was inspired by Sarojindu Bandhapadhyaya's short story. It also foregrounds an alternative view or an alternative history of the Bangladesh genocide movement in 1971. I will conclude my talk with these words of Podatik or Subhash Mukhopadra Strike, strike, jekhane hi thaki Moedane shabai mili ajike Strike, strike, wherever we stay All of us will assemble in the Moedan Meaning that Mohatta Gandhi's Nelson Mandela's Swainkas, Fanos, call for a holistic future, call for a democratic pluralism is on the verge of destruction. But they told us that we should protest peacefully. At the same time, they warn us at nationalistic xenophobia and European humanism. Thank you very much.